Hi there. This is the 11th video where we continue our uh, sessions about building enterprise level Blazor applications. In the last session, we talked a little bit about displaying and reporting the status of a submitted a student entity. We talked a little bit about showing the um, the report when there is a validation error, and we wanted to make sure that you know we are able to render the information and pass that information through to the API all the way down to our API endpoint and back. Now, there's a couple of problems with this. When I said last time, we said, you know, and back, I want a confirmation that my request have succeeded or is in progress to succeed or to be submitted or it errors out. Let's go back to where we started. I'm going to share my screen here real quick. And let's run the application as it stands today. If you remember, last time we were uh, uh, working on submitting a student entity or a student record or registering a student, you know, you remember how we said, you know, if I have ABC123, here's Hassan, M, Habib, and here is mail, and here's maybe a date of birth. If I click Submit Student and there is no API supporting that in the back end, it takes a while because it's trying to connect to that API. And then eventually it'll fail. It'll say, you know, dependency occurred, contact support. Contact support meaning that, you know, we don't know what the problem is that's happening. You know, there's a dependency error that happened and we don't know how to explain it. But it takes a little bit of time. And if my, if I submit a successful student entity, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, uh, start my actual API here real quick. If I actually submit a successful student, I don't get any result either that uh, the the submission have su successfully completed, which is another problem. I'm going to go ahead here and run my API real quick. And I'm going to show you here the situation when you actually submit submit an API. So all of this is, is mainly around being able, okay, here we go. So this is my API. And then if I go back here and click submit student, it should just work like a charm. So this, this error will still be there, even though my submission has completed, right? Which is a problem because I can't reflect the status of that student. I'm going to, I'm going to prove it to you. If I go in here, I hit in here and say ABC 1985, and I go into my uh, API in here, Here's my API, and I'm going to just navigate through the database. There's Estimizer. My apologies. Here's the OSSS. So this is OSSS right here. Here's the database, and I'm just going to go ahead and display the students in that database. View data. There's a bunch in here, and there is no students with identity number 1985. So if I go back into my um, view here and click submit with 1985 the the execution succeeds and a new record is added it's right here but there's no indication of that so you see how this is problematic it's really important for you to understand that when you're building UI you has to be as communicative as possible tell your end user what's happening tell them whether you you know you're in the progress of doing something or you submitted something come again check later contact support oh there's a validation exception please try again talk to your end user through the UI and provide them the best experience possible the rule here is after any action that a user performs on the system if 3 seconds have passed without you communicating some sort of message there's probably a bad experience lying behind that. All right. So whether, you know, as soon as you log into a page, your user needs to wait as little as three seconds before something loads up in front of them and they are able to see the system. Or, you know, they're submitting a request. Tell them what's happening in less than three seconds. If the request succeeded, tell them what happened, that it succeeded within three seconds, so on and so forth. Take that rule, you know, really, really strongly because this is how, you know, you can improve the UX, not the UI. UX, you're improving the user experience, which is completely different. Like, you can build UI components all day long, but if these UI components are not easy to use and they're not uh, fun to use, then there is no point there's no, it's it, the user, you're going to lose your users, you're going to lose the people that are trying to use your system. All right. So if that's the case, then let's go ahead and do some reporting 
about what's happening in our system, right? I want to be able to go and say, when I click that submit button, that the submission of that button will basically show up that says, okay, we are submitting right now. And then as soon as a response comes back, I say, oh, it succeeded, right? Some people even go further by saying, okay, submit right now. And after three seconds, if there's no response, tell the user something. Tell them, sorry, this is taking longer than expected. Talk to them, right? Let's go ahead and see what, what that looks like in the real world. I'm going to go ahead in here for the people on their cell phones and increase the font real quick. Let's put that at 175. There you go. And let's go back here. All right, and let's minimize some of these windows. And let's go ahead and start working on that. So that means if I'm actually going to report a status and need the component of some sort to help me report that status, right? Ideally, we used this error label in our student component. So let's go back to our student registration component in here. In the student registration component, we build this little something that we called error label. Let's change this a little bit. Let's call it status label. So now it's going to be able to do much, much more things than just reporting an error. And while we're at it, and I know that we set up the status label to be a color red, you know, when, when it's reporting the status, but not all status reports are supposed to be colored in red. Like, for instance, waiting might be in black or maybe orange. Um, uh, submitting, you know, black or orange. You know, you can also say submit it, uh, the, the request have been submitted successfully. You want to put that in green. And if there is an error, you want to put that in red. So you have black, red, green. Let's see if we can actually give more capabilities to our label base. Uh, component in here to actually apply a color. So just like this one, I can go ahead in here and say void set color. And here's a color. And I can go ahead in here and say, um, uh, so the color that so that so this is the color in here, I can go and say this dot color equal color. So basically, so basically, that's me setting up the value to the color um, uh, property in here. And while we're at it, and I think that we've already done that, if you look at the uh, label base in here, you, we are already applying that color in here. So this is good. That means that we already have the right stuff in place. Let's start by writing unit test. Let's just clean this up and go ahead in here. Change error label to status label. We're just preparing things up and then implement a function to set color for base label component. All right, so we have all of this. That's great. Let's go ahead and start with a simple test. I want to write a test that says when the submission is completed successfully, I need to see a green a green label that says submitted successfully. How do we go about doing that? Since we've already written a test, let me hide the camera here so you can see the bottom of this. Um, there you go. So since we've already written a component test, under the views here. And this component test basically tests that we have submitted. There you go. Should submit student. All we have to do is just write a test in here that says, here we go, add student, right? Let's go ahead in here and say this dot rendered student component dot instance dot status label. So in here we said should be null. We're going to take this out. It shouldn't be null anymore. We want this um, status label dot uh, color should be and here's color dot uh, green so we want to add a green color in here let's go ahead and add a green color we don't have a green color let's go ahead and add a green color to this list so we have black red and let's put green in here all right so we want this to be green so that's number one number two we want this component instance dot status label dot text dot value should be submitted successfully. I'm going to copy that because I'm probably going to misspell it. OK, so what I'm basically doing here is that I'm writing a test. And this test basically says, when a successful submission happens, please display a label with a green color that says that the, that, that the uh, request has been submitted successfully. 
So how do we go about doing that? Let's first make sure that this test fails and let's make sure it fails for all the right reasons. Let's run this first. Here we go. All right, we have a little a little error in here. Uh, the error label. We call this status label. All right, so change that. That's the reference. Let's try to run this again. Here we go. And it failed. And why did it fail? Don't just take, don't just go and say, oh, it failed. Then we're good. No, make sure that it's failing for the right reason. So in this case here, it basically says, I expected the color to be green, but I found red, right? And it probably would make more sense that we validate the content before the color due to the priority and the importance. I mean, if it shows up submitted successfully in red, that's less uh, terrible than showing it in green and saying error occurred or not displaying anything at all. So let me switch those a little bit. Let's go ahead. So we should get another error here. So it says, I expected you to say submitted successfully, but found null. Great. So now we got ourselves a failing test. Since we're following this pure coding approach, let's submit a failing test right here. And let's just go ahead in here and fix that test. Let's make that test pass. So what do I want to say here? I want to say after this submission is completed, if I don't fall into any of these exceptions, I'm going to go ahead in here and say this dot status label dot color equal color dot green. That's number one. Great. What's the second thing I want to do? Actually, this is bad. You shouldn't be setting it like this. Say set color, which is why we made that function. So this is dot green like this. And then again, status label dot uh, set value should be submitted successfully. Oops, like this. Submitted successfully like this. Right, so that means that when I actually submit the request and this student object is actually coming back successfully, that means that I should have the right status in here. So if I go and run my test right now, my exact failing test that just failed a second ago, this guy right here, this guy should pass. Let's see. There you go. So that basically means that when I submit a student, the student actually gets submitted to the system and I get to see that status. Now let's go ahead and submit that test or commit that test as passing and let's move on to the next stage where we refactor the code a little bit. So I'm going to call this pass and while we're at it, since we're writing a unit test, why don't we just experiment with it? Let's just run the actual application and see if this actually is the case. Do we actually get submitted student successful? So I'm going to go ABC 999 Hassan, M, Abib, here's mail, and here's 1985, and let's click submit. So far, I don't have a reporting to this. So you see the status right here, it says submitted successfully. Submitted successfully. So that means my code actually works. I can take a screenshot, put it in my PR, and tell people, okay, you know, when a student is submitted, I can actually display submitted successfully. All hard coded. I don't have to, you know, scan through the HTML or any of that stuff. All of it is strongly typed. All of it is strongly typed. Okay. What's the next thing that I want to do? I want to run all my tests first to make sure that everything is working as expected. I want to run all my tests. There you go. It, things, it seems that things are working as expected. In the test, in, 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 the, in, in TDD world, when you're test driving something, you go through three different stages. You go from red, a failing test, and then you make it pass. So you go to green, and then you refactor, and then you go back to red, green, refactor. There's a lot of piece of refactoring that we need to do here with our status. And this is a little piece of, um, um, of important uh, piece of information that I want you to pay attention to. If you're building a method like this and you have two statements that are inseparable, that are technically idempotent in their purpose, it probably makes more sense that you couple them together into one statement. Okay, so this guy's only responsibility is to submit a student, but these two guys are responsible for reporting that the student submission have succeeded. So why don't we just do control period in here, extract a method, and say report student submission succeeded. See how simple this is? So basically you're keeping your main uh, functionality in the system very thin in the sense that it's taking care of all the little 
details under smaller methods. Don't just make a method that calls another method. That doesn't make any sense, right? If you're making a method that calls only one method, there is no variable definition or anything underneath. That just doesn't make any sense. Unless the name of that method that you're calling is really terrible and you want to give it another name, I would I would appreciate that. But otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. So I have this method right here, report student submission succeeded. The other thing that I want to refactor in here, since all my tests are passing, I noticed in here that my label has a default color of red. We probably don't want to do that. Instead, we want to go and say report student submission has failed and set the colors accordingly. So how do we go about doing something like that? Let's go ahead in here and remove this. We're probably going to have some failing tests because the color has changed. See, you're changing UI code. But, but your test is telling you that you've done something wrong. And let's just be consistent here and say report student submission failed, just like this. So what does that mean? I need to put this in red like this. And I need to take the uh, exception. This guy is a little bit different now because the message is an input parameter. This is error message because it changes from one person to another from one incident to another. So this is my error message right here, like this. And instead of setting the status label like this, let, why don't we just go ahead and just let me steal that method name in here and just replace this part here with this. Replace this part here with this. And this part here with this. And this part here with this. So these are all the cases that I have that basically handles student submission failed. If you ever determine that you want to change how you handle errors, you don't have to change it anywhere else based on the exceptions that you are receiving. And as you can see here, the way we handle these exceptions is different from one place to another. In here, we read the inner exceptions. In here, we read the outer exceptions. And they have their own different way of communication. All right, so now if I run my tests, everything here should just go green immediately or not. Let's see why it didn't go green. Well, first of all, let me take out this guy here. And let me just reference the actual not drawings. This is our own model. There you go. So that makes this a little bit cleaner. And this is a student submission failed, set value. This is all good. Let's see why. Oh, why? oh I see why. This guy is failing here because it assumed that the default value of the text should be red. We don't need that guy anymore, actually. We don't need that guy anymore. But what we really need in the in the exceptions area, we need to make sure that we verify that the student that the status label actually has a color that is red. Now that we need to verify. So let's go ahead in here and say, you know, label instead of that we want to say the color should be color like this dot red. All right, so now this test would fail if I actually don't put the right color in there. And let's do the same for the rest of those. So in here I have this. I have two tests, you know, that handle four different cases because we're using theory. Now if I run everything, everything should just pass. If at any point in time someone decided to change the color that displays the error in that component, What's going to happen is that um, the uh, these tests are going these tests are going to fail. So let's just go ahead and commit those as well. So first, let's say code rub. So that's, code rub is basically my way of saying refactoring. So now I, I refactored those and this, these tests didn't fail. I already they already did something with additional with with additional refactoring just to make sure that I'm uh, reporting the right status. All right, even though I did this. I want to test this as well. I want to do something bad, like some validation error or something, just to see that you know the, the status is not being reported as it's supposed to. So let's see if that's really the case. I'm going to leave this empty. I'm just going to go ahead and click Submit Students. Look at this. Invalid student view occurred. Parameter name, identity number, parameter value is empty. right? And like I said before, we're going to improve our exception and validation errors to be a little bit more descriptive. So a better description would be, you know, um, identity number is not supposed to be empty. I want to give you an entire report, an entire list of the things that are supposed to happen, you know, why this form is submitted instead of giving you one error at a time. Like, for instance, if I go here and say, ABC123 and I click Submit Student, it's going to say, well, the first name is wrong. I want it to give me 
I wanted it to give me all that report at once. And this is something we're going to talk about in the next videos. Now, <clears throat> we're talking about user experience, right? You will notice that there is a problem here that when I submit a name and, and, and an age and all that kind of stuff, it takes a little while before it actually goes back to submit it successfully, right? I want to capture that. When I am submitting a student, I actually want it to tell me that it is submitting, please wait, and then it will show me su submit it successfully. How do we go about doing something like that? We need a complete, and I want you to pay attention to this one. This one is really, really important. If I go in here and say, <clears throat> I want to write a test do sub during submission, and this test will basically say here, so I'm going to put it in the middle here because you render, you wait, and then you actually fully submit. So let's write a test in here. And this test will basically say, should display submitting status, hmm, submitting status before student is submitted successfully. See this? This here is a test that basically will go and say, when you click the button, while we're waiting for the API to respond, we will say, submitting, dot, 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 submitting. You know, we're waiting for the submission to happen. How do we go about writing something like that? This is like a middle state between the render state and the submit state. How do I hold off my function to visualize what it looks like right when this function is submitted before the API actually responds back since I own the I own the mock the service that I'm calling I could probably do something to make this work so let's just go ahead in here and say well I'm gonna go and say this dot student service view mock setup and here's my service right and in this service I'm gonna go and say add view async and I'm gonna say it is any student view because I don't really care like in this instance I don't really care what input is coming and that validating that this input is happening. I actually care more about that when I click the button it's displaying that it's waiting or submitting or whatever the case may be how do we go about doing something like that you can actually go ahead and say returns async and you, you can return anything let's just create some some student view so this is student view some student view doesn't matter what it is and this is create random student view and this some student view that's coming back I can add a delay in here and this delay will basically say time span from milliseconds and I can just put like some 500 milliseconds or something so what this guy is basically going to go and say it's basically gonna go and say that you have submitted a a student view and I'm not going to respond right away I'm going to add a little bit of delay and this little bit of delay is going to help you basically validate what the status is before you return the value now this is very dangerous right because it could be a hellhole of a flaky test that sometimes pass sometimes succeed so you want to do this with very very close caution ideally using an event that would basically hold off the method or a callback, you know, is much better. But I saw that this is the easiest, simplest way, um, really coolest way to remember, you know, to do something like this. But I'm still in, in search. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm still in search. I think this is one way to do it. But I'm still doing my own research as well to make sure that we have even a better solution. It's not enough, but, but uh, a, a, the number one rule in the engineering manifesto is that, you know, don't just settle for the solution that you're familiar with or the solution that you know. Make sure you're continually, lear continuously learning, continuously trying to improve your skill set. So in here, I'm delaying my method so I can capture a particular status. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead in here and say this dot rendered component right equals render component so this is student registration component so this is me rendering that component so, okay that's successful and then under that I'm gonna go and say this dot rendered component dot instance dot click that that button submission button 
dot click. So this is when the button is clicked. So what do I want to verify when this happened? I want to go ahead in here and say this dot rendered student component dot instance dot status label right dot value should be equivalent to submitting dot 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 like this submitting right also I want to verify that it has a black color so I want to say that the color on this guy here should be color dot black so we're reporting the status in a black color we're basically saying this is the status that I want to verify all right under that I was gonna go and say I want to verify that this mock of this service have actually been called service dot add student view async with any student view like this and I want to verify that these mocks there's no additional calls have happened to this mock all right so I'm verifying that there's no additional calls I'm verifying that while this method is on delay I am actually displaying the status of submitting now this is a very tricky situation because we're basically delaying the submission so we can see if we would display a different status before the API comes back let's have this guy fail first so here's a failing test there we go that's a failing test why is this guy a failing test he says I expected this to say submitting but found null that's actually good news why is that good news because if it actually finished if the test actually finished it would have said but found submitted successfully but it didn't finish the test exited before it actually evaluated that status so that's good news let's go ahead and submit this as a failing test right here and let's go and actually implement this it's gonna be very simple we're gonna go build a little method in here so this is submission this is error chronologically speaking let's put the order of these methods in the way that they're most likely to, to occur so there's waiting there's submission succeeded or there's submission failed. so in here I'm gonna go ahead and say sub report student submission waiting or in progress or whatever you want to say right and in here I'm gonna go and say this dot students la student label exact same thing in here instead of color green I'm gonna say black instead of submitting successfully I'm gonna say submitting dot 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 like this okay now let's go ahead and use that method up here so this will happen before before the submission happens so this is this reporting it's submitting submitting and then succeeded let's see if that makes our test pass let's find out here we go and pass why because I delayed my method so I can actually verify that I'm in a submitting state right I tried this multiple times just to catch to capture flakiness so I'm just gonna go ahead and say dot net test just to capture any potential flakiness in the system and it seems to be quite performant but then again like I said to you it's a work in progress I'm still trying to see if this is actually more reliable it doesn't introduce flaky tests because this is an enterprise application at some point in time your application is gonna run some f five or six or seven thousand tests and you want to make sure that you're resetting the status you're wanting to make sure that you know the that your engine is working properly as you can see here as I'm talking to you I'm, I'm, I'm hitting it many 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 times just to capture any flakiness in this test it's probably a good idea if I can you know develop uh, maybe maybe if I had the time I'll develop a library that you know people could run so it would test the flakiness in their test and actually try to verify if there's any flakiness in any of their tests that might be useful there might be something already out there that already does the same thing so now I can run everything and I can go and say yeah everything is passing here you go everything is passing successfully let's run it one more time it seemed like it was thinking there for a second 
right and as you can see the test itself is not any different than any others like you see the tests go between 200 100 500 some of them are less than like a test like this submitting us to 325 this one is 515 because of the delay right if you start putting your test in above 1000 milliseconds that's one second uh, I would start questioning what's going on with your tests right because at some point in time in any a uh, large application out there, if you're running a large enterprise monolithic application, it's going to be around 4,000 tests, maybe a little bit more. So 4,000 tests, you know, if every one of them is taking a second, then you're going to wait a lifetime until you're done. That doesn't make sense, right? So under milliseconds, three milliseconds, two milliseconds, six milliseconds, maybe half, half a second, maybe that's okay. But anything beyond a second in a test, uh, that is not an acceptance or an integration test, I would start questioning the quality of the test. All right, so we got this out of the way. Now let's go ahead and submit this as a passing test. And let's go ahead and test it. Let's go ahead and see if it's actually showing submitting in here. So here's ABC 2000, Sun M, Habib, and here is Mail. 1985 submit do you see this did you see this Let me, let's try this again submitting submitted successfully submitting submitted successfully right so this is the beauty about this if your api takes a little bit longer right for whatever reason you know let's let's put a delay in our api just to see it in real time i'm going to go ahead in here just for testing purposes i'm going to go into my actual endpoint in o triple s controllers students controller in here I'm gonna go ahead and add a delay just for funsies I'm gonna go ahead in here and say a wait a thread this is don't don't ever use this in your production code unless you have a very good reason but I'm just gonna delay it here in maybe 1000 milliseconds something of that nature I don't think you need to await this one there you go so I'm just gonna sleep you know maybe two seconds let's let's make it three seconds just so we can see what this looks like here. I'm spinning up my API again. So I'm basically here, you know, trying to um, simulate a delay in a particular API. So now if I go and submit, now it's going to take a while. See, look, submitting and submitted successfully. Does that make sense? So when I submit a student, I am communicating with the student, with, with the person that's submitting their data. I'm telling them, hey, I'm doing some stuff. Obviously, this is just the concept of states going from waiting, loading, uh, or, or content or error, right? But obviously, there's so many other things that you actually can do to provide a better user experience. For instance, you can display a spinner, right? You can display a progress bar. You can display a, um, a, you know, whatever, whatever, if you're ordering pizza from Domino's, for instance, they'll show you a guy cooking the pizza, you know, while they're making the pizza and they'll show you what stage it's in. Oh, it's in the preparation stage. It's in the cooking stage. It's in the delivery stage, whatever the case may be, right? These are all uh, different ways to improve the user experience to allow people to actually interact with your application. Like I said before, some applications go even the extra mile and say, well, if it's in submitting state and it's over a minute or over 30 seconds, go ahead and send another status that says, this is taking longer than expected, try again later, or something of that matter. And with that, that would be the end of this session. We learned how to report a status. We learned how to be able to be more communicative, you know, through our UI. In the next session, I'm going to talk a little bit about navigation. What if I don't want to say submit it successfully? I want to go and move the dialogue completely into a different region, right? And while we're at it, we might actually explore locking these fields. Like if you're submitting like this and you're still allowing your user to type, that's a bad experience. You probably want to lock all these fields and make them read only so the end user is not playing around and, 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 and doing more things or you could also disable that student button we will talk about that a little bit and then after that we'll talk about navigation you know okay you're submitting you're in progress something failed and validation failed I want to go back to my form but what if I already succeeded I want to move to a completely new form that says students su submitted successfully there's no further action 
from that point and that's a better user experience and that's what we're going to talk about in our next video so that's pretty much it i hope you enjoyed this video and i apologize for the delay if you have any questions as usual if you have any questions comments or questions um, or concerns please feel free to reach out in the comment section i'll make sure i provide the links for all the previous videos of this series and do not forget to like and subscribe thank you so much for watching see you later